Hello students, I made a video for you for fractions, tips and tricks for junior math students. When I think of fractions, I always think of a pizza or a dollar. I'll explain. First thing we want to talk about a fraction. A fraction is any part of a whole. So I wrote the fraction one half over here, and let's get our terms down first. The top number is the numerator. The bottom number is the denominator. I always pretend that the denominator is the number of slices in the whole pizza and the numerator is how many we have. Feel free at any time to pause the video and go back and try some of the questions yourself. So big or small, depending on the picture, Every fraction is always one whole. So regardless of how many slices the pizza has, it is always one whole pizza broken into smaller slices. Okay, so pay attention to the number of slices or sections or fractions you are asked to look at when you are doing your question. And remember, it doesn't matter how big the pizza is or how small it is. A third of a pizza is the same amount for a huge pizza or a small pizza. The dollar is also a nice way to look at fractions because when we get into mixed fractions you're going to see it written as a decimal and money is usually written as a decimal. So you can also think of every whole fraction written as 1.00 the same as you would write the value for a dollar. You're going to be learning about equivalent fractions or equal fractions uh, in this unit. So let's take a quick look here that this pizza is broken up three different ways, but the way it's broken up is all the same amount. So one half of the pizza here, when divided in half again, we now have four slices. When those two slices are divided in half again, we have eight slices. But as you can see, the shaded in amount is the exact same for each pizza. Same over here. With our next example, we could have a different pizza cut into three slices. Those slices cut in half. And those slices cut in half again. But the shaded in amount is the same for each slice. These are called equal fractions, and there is a trick to get equal fractions using either division or multiplication. So I'll take a look at the first example here. We have one half, okay? One half is the same as so many fourths. Well, looking at this top example up here, I can see that one half is the same as two fourths. How I got that, without using my photo up here, is actually multiplying the numerator and the denominator both by 2. 2 times 2 gives me 4. 1 times 2 gives me 2. Let's look at the middle example. 3 times something gives me 6. I know from my multiplying strategies, 3 times 2 gives me 6. So I will also multiply the top number by 2 to give me 2 6. And if you look at the very top of the page here, 2 6 and 1 3rd are equal or equivalent. We'll do one more and then I'll let you try a few on your own. So example number 3, 2 6 is the same as how many twelfths? I know from multiplying 6 times 2 gives me 12. I have to do the same to the numerator, 2 times 2 gives me 4. So if we look at our top example, here's 2 6, and it is actually equal to 4 twelfths. Okay? I'm going to skip down to this example right here, and we're going to use some division instead. So we're going to have 4 twelfths, which we have up here, and we need to find out it is equal to the same pizza that is broken into three slices only. So knowing my multiplication and division facts, I know that 3 times 4 
gives me 12. But I also know that 12 divided by 4 gives me 3. So I'd also have to divide the top number or the numerator by 4, which gives me 1 third. So we can see that 4 twelfths is equal to 1 third. So you can pause it right now and try some of the examples below. Another way we can determine a fraction size is by comparing them. Now, if you are fortunate enough to actually have the shapes in front of you, you can shade them in and see that even though it's all the same pizza, they're cut into different slices. The amounts shaded in will tell you which fraction is bigger. Here I can see that half of this pizza clearly has more than this third of a pizza. Sometimes kids get confused because they see the three and think, well, there's more slices. That is true. But the percentage or the size of the pizza slice is actually um, bigger. So a trick to figure that out, if, for example, you can't see how many slices each pizza has, you can do some division. So two-fourths, if you type on your calculator, two divided by four, it's actually going to equal 0.5. We times that number by 100, and it's going to equal 50%. Okay, so I know that two-fourths of the first pizza is the same as 50% of the pizza. I also then will do that same step for this number. Three divided by four, and that's how you type it on the calculator, equals 0 0.75 times 100 equals 75%. So using my knowledge, I know that 75% is bigger than 50%, which means that this fraction over here has to be bigger. So I know that 50% versus 75% that 75% is the bigger number. We're fortunate though to actually be able to shade in these shapes and you can see that three out of the four of the same size of pizza is bigger. But I wanted to show you how to solve that if you didn't have the pizza slices in front of you. Okay, so I invite you to pause your uh, machine right now and try to figure out the percentages for the rest of these questions to see if you can figure out which fraction is actually bigger. Pause it now, try it, then I'm going to move the pizzas back and you'll be able to shade them in if you need to or draw them and shade them in on your own to compare. Okay, good luck. Here are a few more questions to try. You can totally shade in the shapes if you need to or try the percentages. I encourage you to try the percentages only because you have different denominators here. The bottom or the number of slices for each pizza are not the same. Okay, so knowing how to do percentages will be quite helpful. Here are a few more questions to try. And by now you should be getting pretty proficient at this, but uh, try a few more just for practice. Okay, this final slide I'm going to show you how fractions can relate to money. Okay, so let's take a look at the top one here. One whole dollar is the same as one whole dollar, or the number one one out of one fraction or one. When we write the number one we never usually put a decimal down but I encourage you to get in the habit of knowing that one whole of anything always equals 1.0. So half of the dollar is worth 50 cents. Half as a decimal, one divided by two is 0.5 or we times that by 100 and we know that it becomes 50% of the fraction. 
Okay, down here in the bottom, we have three fourths or three quarters because one fourth is also one quarter. Same value. We know in money, one quarter is 25 cents. Three quarters, 75 cents. Okay, now I'm going to show you why it's important to know the money amounts for fractions. Pizza slices are also good, but the money amounts are going to be helpful if you get in the situation where you have more than four fourths for anything. There may come a time where you see a fraction like this. Three and two quarters. Okay? Here's how that would look in picture form. So you have three holes and two quarters. Okay, so the three up here is the whole amount, or written like this, 3.0. The two quarters, we know as a percent, is the same as two divided by four, which equals 50 cents. So we actually have three and a half, and an equal fraction to two quarters. If we divide by two and divide by two, is a half. So we're left with three and a half. When you see a fraction like this, it is called a mixed number. But what happens when you have a number of fractions like this? I've got one quarter here and I have one, two, three, four, five of them. I actually have five quarters here. Anytime the numerator is bigger than the denominator, this is called an improper fraction because you can never have more slices than the amount that the pizza box holds. However, if you put the slices together, you end up with one full box of pizza, or one full dollar, and one extra slice out of another box. So really, you have one and a fourth. So an improper fraction, like five-fourths, can be turned into a mixed number like one and one fourth. And I'm going to show you the trick to that. So let's take a number like three and a half, which is the same as three dollars and fifty cents. And the mixed number is three and a half here. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to take two times three, which gives me six, plus one gives me seven. So I actually have seven halves. Check this out. If I divide my holes in half, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven halves altogether, or three and a half dollars. So three and a half and seven halves are also equal. This is the mixed fraction, and this is the improper. So I encourage you to go onto the IXL math site, practice some mixed fraction review, practice some improper fraction review, and equivalent fraction review. And use your calculator, you're allowed to in this unit, to divide the top into the bottom. And you might get something like 3.50. Okay, good luck guys, and hopefully you found this video helpful. Remember to go back, pause it anytime you need to, and if you have any questions, just send me a message on Edmodo. Thank you.